Hello and welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I sit, have a cup of coffee, and just kind of talk about oil painting. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about the biggest mistake that I see new oil painters making and that I made a lot when I was a new oil painter. If you're new to the channel, then welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. So it's been really interesting for the past year or so on my Patreon, I've been able to work one-on-one -on -one with students. And having done that, I feel like it's given me a much better understanding of how people learn and what works and what doesn't and why certain people see a lot more rapid improvement than others. And I got to say, the thing I've taken away the most from it and what I do think is the biggest mistake that people make is that they don't just stick to one way of learning, like one method or one teacher or whatever for a long enough period of time. And I was completely guilty of this when I started out too. I could have saved myself, you know, years if I didn't just keep bouncing around from different method to different method. And I think that this is such a problem because there is an overload of information online to learn how to paint. But now there are tons of really good artists that have you know, their own YouTube videos, their own workshops, their own online courses. I'm one of them. And I think that the problem is, is that they're all really good. They're all providing really good information and you can learn a lot from them. Now this particular issue hits home for me because I mostly learned how to paint on my own from whatever online content or books I could get my hands on. I know what it's like to have to learn how to paint completely on your own. I mean, that was the number one reason I started my YouTube channel was to give what information I have learned, you know, during this time of having to learn on my own. And I think it is different than learning to paint, you know, in a school or in a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with someone. You have to take a lot of different things into account. And the thing is, is that most, if not all of the good painting instructors out there did not learn to oil paint the way you're trying to learn how to oil paint. You know, they went to a school or they had one-on-one -on -one instruction with someone for a very long time. And to be honest, you know, I wish I could have learned like that. I probably would have learned a lot quicker if I did just have a mentor or one person that I worked with in person you know, every day. I think that is, you know, the best and the fastest way to learn, but we got to be realistic and that isn't possible for everybody's situation. You know, people might not have the financial means to do that or the physical means. You might not live close enough to a painter that you like that you want to get instruction from. Your job might be that the hours that you have free are not the kind of hours that you're going to be able to take workshops. All right. So, why is this a problem? Why is it harder to make progress when you're learning from a lot of different people? You know, shouldn't you be able to take, you know, all the good things from everybody and, and combine it and create your own thing? And, you know, if you're learning from five people opposed to one person, isn't that going to make you get better five times faster? I think it's much more helpful for you to get really good at one particular way of painting than be, you know, pretty good at a bunch of different ways of painting. And the thing is with all these methods, one's not better than the other. I think that all the really good methods of painting all have the same core principles and fundamentals. They just have different ways of getting you to understand them. But it takes years for you to get there and understand them. Think about it when you were learning how to tie your shoes. If every day you had a new person telling you a different way how to tie your shoes, it would take you a lot longer than if you just had one person telling you one way every day. You know, everybody's way is still gonna end up with you tying your shoes, but focusing in on one way will make you get better faster. You know, you do a painting, you learn from it, and you make adjustments for when you paint again. Since your process is consistent, it makes it easy to make adjustments and see what works and what doesn't work. If your process is constantly changing, it's hard to identify what's working and what's not working. Now, the main argument I hear people say uh, about this subject is that, oh, you know, if you just stay with one teacher, or one method, you're just going to become a clone of that teacher and you're not going to develop your own painting style and your painting's just going to look like everybody else's that learns that method or from that instructor. All right, first off, if you're new, you have a lot bigger things to worry about than your style or becoming a clone of somebody else. Like you need to learn how to paint. Like you need to get 
a stronghold of fundamentals. You know, those things should keep you busy for eight hours a day for five years, in my opinion. And if not, then you're a prodigy and you don't need to be watching my videos probably. And I feel a lot of painters will say that about other painters that, you know, have a lot of students or a lot of people, you know, taking their workshops or whatever, a little bit out of jealousy because it doesn't really make any sense because those same people that will say like, oh, you know, that guy, he teaches a, a method or a, a formula and everybody, all his students all paint the same or whatever. You know, they don't ever say that about any painters that are dead, <laughs> like any of the old masters. You know, it's a thing for painters to say like, oh, I studied under so-and-so. You know, I studied under John Singer Sargent. Now, I don't think anybody's alive that studied under him, but they'll even, you know, go down a generation and say like, oh, like the person that I learned from studied directly under John Singer Sargent. You know, and everybody studies the masters, everybody does master copies and tries to break down like what they did and how they did it so well and all this stuff. And it's like, so it's okay, it's so like, that's okay. But, you know, if it's somebody who's just alive doing workshops and a lot of their students paint that way, then that's bad. I don't know. That, it just, that doesn't make any sense to me. If I was a person starting out with oil paint, I'd much rather be a clone of somebody or paint a lot like somebody, but know what I'm doing and understand oil painting because I can always change the way I paint. You know, if you know how to oil paint and you understand the core fundamentals, you can go paint however you like. And it actually makes it a lot easier to choose your style. A lot of people that say, oh, I'm like worried, I, I find my style. It's like, no, like you need to learn how to paint first. You can't, if you don't know how to paint, you can't choose your style. You're going to be forced to choose just whatever style you can physically paint in. But if you understand the fundamentals and get a grasp of oil paint, then you can say, oh, you know, I really like how this particular person does landscapes. Maybe I'm gonna go and study under this different person for a little bit and kind of learn more about how to paint like this or this particular subject. And then, oh, maybe I'll go and I'll learn a little bit of this. You know, I study under different people. I have a, you know, I mentor Bill Farnsworth down here in Florida for landscapes. Um, but, you know, I follow other people for portraits. I plan on taking Michael Shane Neal's uh, workshop in September. The thing is, is though, I've built a solid foundation of understanding oil painting in general that it makes it possible for me to go out and kind of specialize in certain things that I want to get more information or dial in my skills a little better. Now, the thing that I see happen the most with this, like the thing that causes people to leave one method or to just, you know, go look for another way of teaching whenever a new painter hits a wall, because anytime you start like a new method or new process and a new teacher, there's going to be a quick rate of progress at the beginning because you're just going to initially kind of pick up on quick little, you know, tips and tricks from that process. But no matter what process you do, there's going to come a point where your rate of progression is going to slow down and feel like come to a complete halt and you're going to hit a wall and you're like, wow, I feel like I'm not getting any better. That's completely normal. Like, don't think that the answer to you getting better or improving is to, to go to a completely different method or way of painting a different instructor or whatever. You know, stick with it. You know, work through it. Get over that plateau. Like I've seen this. I just saw this in one of my students. You know, I, you know, it, it was literally like a couple months of me telling them the same thing over and over and him just like, you know, practicing and practicing and practicing. And then it finally, then what I was telling him this whole time finally clicked and it just completely opened up his abilities and he really leveled up. Now he could have easily said, you know what, you know, I just think I'm not getting that. It's been like three or four paintings and I haven't seen like any big improvement. I don't think maybe the answers aren't here. I'm going to go and go try, you know, maybe starting a painting like this or, or, or working this way or developing it like this will be the answer. Like, no, he stuck with it and he had faith in the process. And I'm not saying like, oh, it's my process and my, st like it's anybody. Like I don't care, like I really don't care what process you learn, who you're learning from, just stick with it, whatever it is. Trust me, there are enough methods and ways of painting out there that you can bounce around from method to method, teacher to teacher for a very long time. I mean, think about if you wanted to be a professional musician and you're like, oh, I wanna be a professional musician, I like music. It's like, all right, well, what instrument are you gonna play? 
It's like, oh, I'll start with the guitar. I'm gonna start with the guitar. And you do the guitar, and it's like, oh yeah, this is fun, I'm learning, I'm learning. And then it get, it starts getting hard to get to that those upper levels. And you're like, you know what, you know, this is getting kind of hard. Maybe maybe the drums is what I'm gonna do. So you go do the drums. Same thing, I was oh, you know, I'm gonna move over to the piano. Maybe the piano is it. Yeah, you're gonna get better as a musician as a whole, but you're never going to reach higher levels in any one of those instruments. Okay, so what I recommend doing is whatever method that you're doing, stick with it until you're comfortable enough that you feel that you could, you know, teach it on a basic level to someone just starting out. Not that you could open up an entire school teaching this method, but someone came by for an afternoon to learn how to oil paint, you could, you know, get them going. Then I suggest looking to painters that are further along than you that paint in a way that you would like to paint and go seek out their instruction and value your skills in that area more. So keep practicing. Even when you hit walls, even when things are tough, just trust in whatever process that you're doing and you will get better. Trust me, I know what it's like. I've been there. I've been alone for years, painting in a room, no instruction, don't know exactly what I'm doing. Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Am I getting better? Am I getting worse? But the one thing that I always trusted in and I always knew was a good thing was practice. No matter what I was doing, even if I was practicing wrong, I knew that it was still a step forward. You know, practicing wrong might have been, you know, a very small step forward and gaining information one way or another could, you know, produce bigger steps forward, but practicing is always a step forward. Remember that. Don't ever think painting is a waste of time. No matter how your painting turns out, if you do a painting and you work on it for hours and it turns out horrible, you end up scraping and wiping it off. Do not say to yourself, man, I just wasted five hours. Don't say that, that will kill you mentally. And it's not true, you learned a lot in that painting that didn't go well. You probably learned more from that than a painting that did go well. All right, if you have any questions or comments about this paint talk, leave those questions or comments in the comment section down below. Now, if you like this little paint talk, you like what I'm saying, you wanna get some more information on oil painting, uh, in the description below, I got a link to my Foundations of Oil Painting course. That's a great place to start. Also down there is a link to my Patreon page where I have full painting video tutorials. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.